Well, hi there. My name is Butch Brown, and this isn't a really a boat commercial to sell you a boat, but I'm been asked a little bit about my boat, my ride. You know, my favorite ride. I get to fish out of them all. I fish out of the New Rangers. I fish out of all of them. This boat right here should be in the Fishing Hall of Fame because this boat right here has probably landed, and you know it has, more 10-pound double-digit bass than probably any boat around because I've fished out of this boat since I was 16 years old. I bought it on the corner of uh, Wilbur and Satakoy in the San Fernando Valley from a man when I was 16 years old. So that was 1974 when Castaic opened up its doors, the lower lake. This was the second boat to launch at Lower Castaic ever on the opening because the first boat that launched was the patrol boat. The second boat that launched was this boat. Back then it was beige. I had a long pair of oars and a Shakespeare 606 trolling motor on the back. And that's how I got around. I turned the trolling motor on because it was only 14 pounds of thrust, 12 volt, and I'd row up at the same time. I bought this boat from a gentleman, and his name was Wendell. And he loved the boat. Okay, it's an Alumacraft. It's a 1966 hull. And if you look up here at the VIN number, well, it's only four numbers and two letters. That's how old this boat is. And the man... I pulled up and I said, I want to buy the boat. And he said that, you know, this was like cutting his arm off, but he can't use it anymore. And he had it all covered and kept beautiful. And he said, just promise me that you'll always take care of it as long as you own it. And I did. I said, I'll take care of it. I'm a fisherman. That's, I will take care of it. It's my boat. Well, long story short, it's been through renovations, trial and error everything about it but I got it dialed in the way it's supposed to be to catch big fish it's super quiet it's low to the water when fish come along it pretty much just looks like a log in the water you know it's still all scratched on the bottom leaks it's always leaked you know but uh, I've got that problem fixed a little bit thanks to some new products on the market but over the years I've learned how to make things for it that make life easier for me out there. Trial and error. You know, like the way the deck is set up here. The way the trolling motor is. If I want to drop an anchor, I can tie it off real quick with this. I've got, I've got uh, bilge pump. I've got the light switch. I've got sonar. Um, and there's another auxiliary switch, just like big boys. And then over here, I've got a timed aerator which I have a big aerator in the boat. Um, I have all my storage under here. I kept it as low as I could so my rods didn't get all beat up, which you see me throwing them around a lot. But uh, I tried to make them lay as nice as possible without rubbing on any kind of stuff. But to me, this is the ultimate swim bait machine because when you get out on the water, and I'm telling you, if I could have fished this in the HBC, in any of the tournaments, I would have done a lot better because it's part of me and it's a confidence thing. But the problem is the big lakes, big water, and this lake boat's not going to do it. This is made for our smaller lakes here in California. Normally, I have a four-horse electric motor, which makes this one of the fastest electric boats in California. And that's, that's sto in storage right now because I don't really need it. But uh, normally I bring like four rods with me, all swim baits. And one of the reasons it's a good swim bait boat because it's low to the water. And when I get these followers in clear water, well, I got them because they come right to the boat. They go under the boat. They swim around the boat. When I'm in the big rangers and stuff, I'm 10 feet in the air. I'm as high as the ceiling. And they see me like a half a cast away. And they already detect me. So they're... You know, they already know there's danger. They just veer off. But in this boat, they'll come right to the boat. And I much would rather prefer this when I have those situations occur. Uh, over the years, I have learned a few things about trolling motor props and being stealth. And uh, at one time, I put the Kippawa props on here. And they're supposed to be weedless and give you more power, which is what I was looking for. But I could hear some kind of noise. Okay, and I fished it for three months, 
and I had a hard time getting bit. Well, I took that prop off and I put back on the stock prop and I got started getting bit right away. So whether it's got anything to do with the Kippawa or not, to me, I'll stick with the stock. I have a spare prop for this one, which is the aluminum one, and that also makes a noise, but it's just a spare prop. But uh, this motor has been really good to me. You know, a few things I've done to the boat is I have my storage up here, you know, where I keep my junk and my batteries. These are where I keep all my thumper tails when I'm out there fishing. My sunblock, you know, my storage, everything I need there keeps it pretty dry. I'm good with that. Come down here. You know, I got this all dialed in for myself. So I have my gas, which normally I don't have. I, this is what I take with me to the lake when I get serious and I'm going to start fishing and uh, doing the swim bait thing. You know, I do have other stuff going on, but you know, it all, uh, it's, it, I just love to keep everything out of my way. You know, I have storage in here, all my safety stuff, pumps, everything. Um, comes into here. This is my live well. I gotta have this for the motor when I'm at the lake. Not important. I tried to do it in all black and then have a blue bottom. It seems to keep them calmer, but uh, that's just me. In the old days, I didn't have this top on here. And I can't tell you how many times I'd open up the live well and the fish would just go right on out and he's gone. I put this top in. I have an uh, air pump. It's got an air pump. It's got fresh water running through it constantly. I put the Sure Life in there. I treat the fish when I catch them to make sure that it cleans them out and then before they're released. And it's, it's a big live well and it'll handle some big fish. Um, right here. When those special times come, this is my eco-friendly five fish limit holder. And they're all bogey grips now. No more stringer clips because we're in a new generation. And, and uh, I'm from the old school where we used to use the clips. And, and we have PETA out there and you're harming them and things like that. Well, now, now I don't harm them. I can hold up my big limits, take my pictures and be done. Keep that all dialed in, ready to go. Back here, you know, I've been dialed in for the Golo and things like that, my, you know, all that kind of stuff. I have storage in here, but this is where I keep my anchor when I'm ready for my drifts. It's a 14-footer. It's made out of heavy, heavier gauge steel than any of the boats are made out of now. Um, this is where all the camera work's done. This is all homemade because it had to be heavy duty, so it didn't shake a lot, you know. Uh, works out really good for me. Uh, definitely got to have those to get on the trailer in here. I got my drains for all my, uh, my uh, live well. There's a pump in there that re recirculates, but I let everything run all day. If there's a fish in there, he gets fresh water and he gets recirculated. And then he gets catch and release poured in there. So that way it calms them down, cleans parasites out of them, fixes their gills. Doesn't get any better than that. And as you know me, my net is always in the same place. For years it's been here. And it's so important that you do that because if you're going to swim bait and you're going to fish for big bass, and that day comes when you hook that big one, in your mind... You want to know that all you got to do is lean down, whether you're right or left-handed, and that net's going to be right there. My net, when I have it, pops out of here, and then it sits right against this rubber piece. Okay, so it's off the ground. Okay, so when I've got that fish on, and I know where the camera is, and it has to be there, well, when I get, I land them all on this side. Well, I already know, boom, I'm going to grab my net, and I'm going to be right here, and I'm going to get my fish and I use a certain kind of net and it's a fast net. You, you can buy all the nets you want, okay? $100 nets, but they're heavy. They're big. You know, they're beautiful. But for one man to handle and to handle quickly, 
you only hit so many times when that fish comes up and shakes before he shakes the hook off. So you gotta have a net that you can move around, you know, and 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 and, and not not be like, you know, trying to net it like this. I've seen these these guys on video trying to net their fish, but their their nets are handles too long or something. So what I do is I just sort of customize it a little bit. So I got grab. It doesn't have the rubber coating. It's big enough. The lure gets tangled in here like no other. I'll tell you that right now. But I don't care, okay? The lure gets tangled in here. I got a pair of scissors. You know, I'll cut it out if I have to or try to untangle it. But I got the fish. I've got a 15 pound bass right here. I don't care about the net. You know, I can fix it or get another. And obviously, if you look over on this wall, I have plenty of nets to go through. And uh, those are all uncoated, hard to find um, Promar nets that are super lightweight and they're made, I, I made the handles just the way I want them and everything. And then that way I'm not gonna run out. I do like scent on my, my lures. You know, I have my, my uh, buoy marker when I need it. I have my, my good luck charm that's been in the boat for about 25 years. And when I need some, uh, some luck out there, I rub the old belly. I'll do anything I can to get bit, but you know, if I lose that out of my boat, I'm, I don't know what I'll do. But anyways, I will fish out of this boat 24 seven. It gets bit. It, 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 if I could fish all the lakes around, I would fish out of it, but it's, that's not feasible because of the weather on these, some of these lakes. About what, 45 years old? So uh, something like that, that's, uh, that's a pretty old boat. And it's probably been rebuilt, oh, probably about five times. But this time I got it just exactly the way it's supposed to be. But like I said, this boat right here, in my opinion, with all the video and documentation of catching big fish out of here, it should be in the Fishing Hall of Fame Museum. And I always told myself that if I ever got this boat and could not fish out of it anymore, that I would cut it because if unless it was going to the museum, I would cut it right down the middle, leave the seats in, put a piece of plywood on the side, leave the trolling motor in the back that normally is on there, the one in the front, and I would mount it on my wall with a five fish stringer hanging off the side. And that's what I would do if I had to. So anyways, this is my ride. My name's Butch Brown, and it just goes to show you that you don't need to have a big fancy boat. You don't need to have all this crazy stuff to catch big bass, because look at where I'm at. Anyways, doctor, I'll see you guys later.